Rakas, thank you for this kind of introduction. Uh, it's my privilege today to be speaking on a topic which we usually face in our daily routine clinical practice, that is uh, bursting insulin myths uh, and how do we bridge the gap between the patients and the doctors. Uh, this is the data from the emotion study. Uh, how do patients with type 2 diabetes respond when a healthcare provider recommends starting insulin injections? 11% will discontinue within 7 days, 16% are surprised by the recommendation, 23% uh, are very upset and 48% are reluctant actually to start insulin straight away. So friends, insulin is not a punishment. Over the next 13 minutes, we are here to fill the gap that is provide them with a good action plan. Uh, with respect to overcoming this uh, psychological insulin resistance and possibly the various insulin myths associated with it and thereby provide them with a good treatment regime. Uh, if we look into the natural history of type 2 diabetes mellitus, uh, by the time diabetes is diagnosed, almost 40 to 50 percent of the beta cell mass is lost and there will be a further loss of approximately 4 to 5 percent expected every year. Uh, thereby, by the end of six years, what we re realize is that almost less than 25% of these individuals will have normal insulin secretion. Uh, as the duration of diabetes increases possibly by 10 years, what is very important for us to remember is that the beta cell loss becomes almost irreversible, which means there is le uh, less of beta cell capacity or mass due to beta cell apoptosis. And this cannot be restored through uh, achieving normal glycemia with your uh, oral antihyperglycemic agents. And this beta cell deterioration or this beta de uh, deterioration in beta cell function is an important cause with respect to the failure of many antihyperglycemic therapies. So what are we waiting for with respect to beta cell exhaustion? This is something which we typically follow in a routine clinical practice, a stepwise approach, uh, starting from monotherapy to dual therapy to triple drug therapy to even four drug therapy and try possibly to use all possible combinations available to us, despite the fact knowing that it may not actually be a very good happy scenario in achieving glycemic control, but we still practice it. And insulin is almost started towards the end of the study where the HbA1c sometimes touches 9 or even 10 percent. And this is where the delay is or that is why there are certain topics which are considered to be early insulin initiation and possibly intensification. So insulin treat, uh, treatment is inevitable once the beta cell uh, function falls below critical threshold value. And insulin is furthermore important in reversing glucotoxicity, lipotoxicity and uh, insulin resistance. And this may help uh, improve beta cell function by resting the beta cells, which is very important. Uh, this is data from very uh, from various Indian uh, uh, studies uh, like the diet care, achieve, present, improve, the ICM or IDAP. And all of these studies have said that uh, with respect to our patients, we are highly uncontrolled with respect to the HbA1c. The awareness about diabetes and its complications among the patient is very uh, low with uh, results of glycemic control beyond 7% and there is poor access to medical care or lower treatment compliance of these patients and there is clinical inertia. Uh, the word which is very important uh, with respect to uh, today's topic, uh, recognition of the problem but failure to act as are the principal causes of good or poor glycemic control in the country. Uh, this is a very important study uh, or the randomized control trials of around 218 patients, almost 80,000 patients. And we all know that with respect to uh, getting the, uh, the HbA1c down, insulin seems to be working much more better irrespective of what you are going to use, uh, whether it's basal insulin or biphasic insulin or a premixed insulin or a prandial insulin. So compared to other uh, hypoglycemic agents, the reduction in the HbA1c is maximum with insulin therapy. But then comes the various associations which give you a big surprise saying that, okay, we have a surprise for you. And then this is what happens. The guidelines actually tell us that, look, we are supposed to use the oral agents first. And then when the, when the treatment uh, strategies do not work, that's when you insulin therapy comes down. So I was actually very happy when I saw Dr. D. Panjal's slide. The insulin was available in 1923. But when you look in towards the the whole slide, there is no insulin out there right uh, after the treatment is available. So insulin has been underutilized, it's last resort option in diabetes management. Unfortunately, it is not used uh, early enough, often enough or aggressively enough to allow the patients to achieve glycemic goals proven to reduce morbidity and mortality and I'm quite sure Benting and Best are going to be very worried wherever they are. Uh, with respect to RSSDI, even we can say that uh, insulin therapy should be considered in all patients failing to achieve glycemic controls on three oral agents. This word is very important. 
practical application of short term insulin therapy and this is something which we need to address to our patients that because the moment you say insulin it's the first feeling it's always for the rest of the life no it's not for the rest of the life we need to break the glucotoxicity the lipotoxicity and the insulin resistance and once the target is achieved without increasing the risk of hypoglycemia i'm quite sure uh, the insulin can be stopped further so the short term insulin therapy has been administered and the long term insulin therapy was used to compensate defective insulin to make a physiological form of insulin secretion in the irreversible component of the beta cell death so it basically works as a maintenance therapy in type 2 diabetes with irreversible component of beta cell death and this is these are various papers which have highlighted uh, the benefits of uh, short term insulin therapy right from improving the beta cell function insulin resistance uh, a long term drug free glycemic remission improving the quality of life uh, improve beta cell function reduce uh, glucagonemia and even our own rssdi uh, guidelines uh, actually promote short term insulin therapy every patient who's got possibly some catabolic symptoms or when the uh, glycemia is beyond 9% or acute complications or pregnancy or even hospital hospitalized patients please initiate short term insulin therapy so insulin distress is a word which was uh, coined by dr kalra i would say and can be defined as an emotional distress uh, response to a suggestion to use insulin characterized by uh, apprehension discomfort dejection denial due to perceived inability to cope up with the requirements of insulin therapy uh, this leads to what is known as psychological insulin resistance uh, which is there on both the sides uh, that is the patient as well as the doctor because it's multifaceted it's a complex interaction of factors when a person faces the decision to start insulin therapy and uh, comply with the ongoing treatment these are the various barriers or the myths uh, with respect to starting insulin therapy i have listed a few of them out here uh, i'm quite sure there would be many more and because each one of us faces this daily in a routine clinical practice but let us bridge this gap by providing them with a good uh, action plan first one uh, oral medications versus insulin i would try obviously like to love to try all other options first that's one that the patient actually thinks about uh, we need to review the other possible options explaining how they work to lower the blood sugars and any side effects or medical reasons why they were not chosen at that particular moment insulin should be considered uh, as a part of our early arsenal of ways to control diabetes if other options have been tried then explain that their body is not producing enough insulin now and needs replacement if new to diabetes and hyperglycemia then explain that insulin therapy may be temporary and until glycemic control can be achieved second it would mean that my diabetes is getting worse and people usually start self blame guilt anger depression anxiety denial helplessness we need to explain that diabetes is not getting worse uh it's a progressive disease and it would uh, require treatment with insulin to prevent diabetes complications which can worsen health the current therapy that is diabetes the diet exercise and the medications may not continue to keep the blood glucose in the glu uh, the goal ranges hence the body needs insulin shots because the pancreas at that particular moment is not producing enough anymore i have seen people developing serious complications after going on insulin patients have long memories of life experiences Uh, whether it's their neighbors their own family relations or uh, anyone else talking about loss of leg or an eyesight or a kidney function etc explain that the facts that complications occurs from years of elevated blood sugars and not insulin insulin is a hormone that is produced naturally and unfortunately most people are started on insulin too late when complications have already been started so the key is to start insulin as soon as necessary to avoid these complications insulin is lifelong once it is started it cannot be stopped i like the need of and the benefits of the short term insulin therapy insulin can be withdrawn once the target or the glycemic goal is achieved uh this is what we usually face daily in our traveling in mumbai anybody who's traveled in the local train dar ke aage jeete dadar ke aage seat hai and this is uh, something because i traveled by tejas express this is what i just put up uh, i would be scared of the needle pain no there are new delivery devices the needles are much more finer and in fact the needle which is used is much more thinner as compared to the ones of the lancets or while drawing the blood uh, by the lab technicians i don't think i could uh, learn to take insulin shots because insulin is something that the diabetics are instructed to inject themselves 
I think we need to demonstrate. Once the doctor demonstrates, I feel I'm quite sure the patient accepts it much more better, even if, uh, though the diabetes educator or the nurse or your receptionist can do it. But I'm quite sure if you help them out with respect to where to inject, how to inject, the patient will definitely accept the insulin technique. I would be worried about getting low blood sugars uh, because we are on insulin. So explain that we can always start on a lower dose and go slow. Monitor the blood sugars up tight rate, down tight rate with respect to the uh, uh, achieving the target and that's why uh, taking care of the hypoglycemia. And you can always help them with uh, just in case there is an hypoglycemia, how can we treat it? Insulin therapy is complicated. Patients assume that insulin therapy will be incon inconvenient and uh, complex. I think we can always provide them with a simple regime, possibly once a day insulin. At, if there's a need twice a day insulin, but do not directly jump into what is known as your MDI or a continuous insulin therapy or insulin pump. These insulin regimes can be individualized. Leptin to give insulin myself, uh, ins uh, myself insulin shots in public, a social stigma which is considered. I think pre patients, the, uh, the pens are quite friendly and if the patient is uh, not being able to take uh, the pens, we can definitely help them or address the fact that there are many patients who are actually using insulin even in the public. Uh, Dr. Anushri is my colleague, she's junior to me, she's a type 1, she has been taking insulin even in the local trains. So that's what I'm trying to say. Even our doctors are type 1, they are a diabetologist and they are using insulin right across the board. So yeah, I'll just try to finish and there are various uh, actors who are actually type 1 or they have been taking insulin wherever they are. So insulin causes weight gain. We need to explain them that it's there are two types of weight gain. A, there is one which is called as defensive snacking. Because I'm on insulin, the patient feels I need to eat more because in order to uh, protect themselves from hypoglycemia. That should be wrong. And the other one is when the sugar gets controlled, uh, the, the glucose in your body is absorbed and stored. And this is basically which is causing the weight gain. And so there is a limit to what you eat and that should there should be a balanced diet and adequate physical activity in certain medications can definitely help us to maintain or even lose weight uh, along with insulin therapy. Cultural influences, I am a vegetarian fasting, there is no longer animal insulin. We started off with the bovine and the porcine insulin, but we do not use it anymore. In fact, uh, insulin is nowadays coming from the baker's yeast, yes madam, uh, which is something nothing but your own bread. And uh, I cannot travel if on insulin, how will I store? Uh, these are facts and uh, this is how even we do it in the rural area. Uh, if you see, there's one, the middle picture, which actually shows that the box of insulin has been kept on the ice. But if you remove the cover and you keep it directly on the ice, the actually label goes away and that is actually wrong. The refrigerator, which does not have that thing, it's very close, so not too cold, not too hot. In the rural areas, there are two pots which have been, earthen pots which have been used, how to store insulin. So things are possible. Uh, these are EASDC guidelines on insulin storage and optimization of injection technique. It's a very beautiful paper. Each one of us can, should actually uh, go through about this paper or guidelines. The media too has a very important role to be played. Ensure facts and discourage myths. Insulin spill ends diabetes jabs. Uh, I think it's a perfect thing for all of our patients, a big advantage. But till it's not available, please promote at least the insulin injections. So we have busted the insulin at times, our patients feel it's a miracle. So they have done the job, not the insulin. Insulin conversation, a conversation about insulin initiation should be started shortly after diagnosis. Timely conversation provides an opportunity to set a positive context for insulin therapy. This helps prevent sense of guilt or personal failure regarding insulin initiation. And the healthcare provider should focus upon open-ended questions to identify the needs of the patient and address any concerns regarding insulin therapy. To conclude my... The key to busting the myths about insulin therapy with trust comes adherence to therapy and compliance to medication. There needs to be a good uh, communication and uh, an interprofessional approach can facilitate this transition to insulin therapy through education and empowerment. Thank you very much for your patient listening. I'll be more than happy to answer a few questions.